Bill Jasper with the New American Magazine here, and it's my pleasure uh, to be here with uh, Dr. Sebastian Luning, uh, currently in Portugal. That's in, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you are from. I'm from Germany. Germany, mm -hmm. uh, but you uh, are a geologist. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, have taught or, tra or uh, educated at a number of universities in throughout Europe. You're here at the Heartland Institute's ninth uh, international conference on climate change, and you were a panelist uh, on a couple of panels yesterday. As a geologist, you bring to the table a number of uh, uh, viewpoints and understanding of the earth and the various eras and epochs that we've uh, mm -hmm. gone through. Uh, what is it that's most striking to you about the global warming debate that uh, isn't addressed or is not properly addressed in most of the policies and uh, arguments that are being being leveled? Yeah, when we read about climate change in the newspapers, we, we listen to the radio, often it is just future predictions that we hear about. And uh, we geologists, we bring that perspective of the past into the discussion. And uh, for my understanding, there are too few geologists involved in the discussion. And uh, trends that are prognosed for the future, they have to be first tested uh, with what happened in the past. And we have seen now uh, nearly a degree of warming, a degree centigrade of warming. And uh, this warming should have already triggered some trends in more hurricanes, more floods, more droughts. And when we look back, surprisingly, this is, has not happened. So the direct um, uh, warming effect is not reflected in a lot of this extreme weather that had been prognosed in the past. And now even the IPCC, uh, acknowledges that and says, well, we don't have proper uh, documentation of this, so they are no longer sure that extreme weather is something that we are dealing with in the future. Now, uh, as a geologist studying the past, you know that we have gone through, the Earth has gone through climate change many times on a huge scale and smaller uh, scales, both in amplitude and in time scale. Uh, does the evidence that you see concern you that we are in some kind of crisis uh, right now? Yeah, we always hear this word unprecedented. And um, this is dangerous uh, from a geological perspective because we're dealing, first of all, with four billion, four and a half billion years of age that the Earth has. But uh, I usually um, restrict my studies to the last 10,000 years. This is after the last ice age. And uh, this is a climate that is similar to today here. And uh, what we see is we see major fluctuations in temperature which are not mentioned in the public discussion. And, and this is where we geologists have to come in and say, hey, a thousand years ago, we had the medieval warm phase. And, and during this time, it was as warm as today, but CO2 was low. You know? And then we go further back. We have something called the Roman warm period. It was, again, as warm as today, more or less. And uh, in between, we had cold phases. They all have names, a little ice age, uh, that's uh, 1500 AD. And then uh, 500 AD, we have got the the cold period of the migration period and, and, and so forth. So when you go back, you see the cyclicity and then you see that what we are having today is nothing that is unprecedented. It's something that has always occurred. And the question is how much on top uh, to this natural signal are we contributing with our CO2? And uh, that, that is a question really we should answer. And, but it's, it's surely not a catastrophe we are we're heading to. Earlier warm periods, uh, the medieval warm period, for instance, uh, uh, and the Little Ice Age, those have been well established in the scientific literature for a long time, uh, but yet there has been a, 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 a recent effort to make those disappear in order mm -hmm. to give a, a uh, unprecedented, an unprecedented yeah. uh, climb there, the hockey stick. Uh, do, do you think that uh, 
effort at what I, I'll just call it strays. It's scientific fraud to try and make all those things uh, disappear. Is that uh, uh, kind of uh, been uh, uh, discredited now? Uh, do you yeah. think, in the sci in the general, in the scientific, what you see in your scientific circles? Yeah, and, and that's something we also have to keep in mind. Science is not always uh, progressing into just one direction. Huh? There are some circles, there are some loops where there are some errors that uh, happen and then are corrected. And the hockey stick was just one of those let's call it error for a moment, you know? And yes, it was poor statistics, poor data, there was the wish to, of course, make uh, the, the, the past un unhappen, yeah, so that it has not uh, really happened, but it, there's too much data now worldwide of the medieval warm phase from all seven continents. And uh, I don't really see this now uh, as a big issue because even the author of first author of that hockey stick, Michael Mann, he has produced new curves which are much in line with uh, what, what the idea was before. Mm -hmm. There is now a medieval warm phase even in Michael Mann's uh, curves. Uh, so yes, it was just a very unfortunate 10 years where, where science has gone wrong. But it has been reclaimed now. Really. Yeah. <laughs> no, and uh, so I think uh, it has been now accepted. Uh, there is later uh, works by uh, Lindquist, for example, very nice uh, curve for the northern hemisphere uh, away from the tropics. And uh, th this is, I think, no longer being debated. The, the medieval warm phase is accepted. It's even in the latest IPCC report in AR5. Uh, so that, that is one very striking example of where there has had to be some backtracking by the yeah. anthropogenic global warming alarmists. Thing. However, uh, they still proceed on many other fronts to yeah. try to use political power to push through uh, false scientific uh, data. That's true, and a, a lot of the articles that are proposed or, or published by IPCC-affiliated scientists, one really has to look twice and three times at them uh, to understand what has happened. And a lot of the claims are just not true. Um, there are um, papers about uh, ice melt that has never occurred uh, in in history, they claim, but when you then look at uh, the historical papers, the geological uh, evolution of the Greenland ice or the Antarctic ice, this has all happened before. It's it's not unprecedented. And yeah, uh, for a while now, the temperature has not been warming, and uh, so people have gone to extreme weather, like those floods, those droughts, those uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. But even there, there is no trend and there is no direct uh, link between the temperature and those events. In Germany and in much of Europe over the last decade, uh, we've seen a big push for so-called renewables, wind and solar. That hasn't worked out so well, has it, as a replacement? It hasn't, and uh, this was maybe initially a very good idea because uh, as a geologist, I know that uh, the hydrocarbons are not forever, yeah? so we are running out of oil eventually. We will not have gas in 200 years, uh, and then the coal will last a little longer, but also that is not endless. So the idea to use the uh, energy that comes free of charge, basically, uh, from, from the sun, from the wind, and so is, is good. But uh, in Germany, it's complete chaos now. Uh, everything is subsidized. Now even the conventional coal power plants uh, want subsidies in order to be on standby when the wind doesn't blow or when uh, the sun doesn't shine. Uh, everybody wants subsidies uh, and uh, the electricity price has doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, people still, uh, yeah, they begin to protest but very quietly, uh, they still think it's for a good cause for the prevention of the climate catastrophe, as the government told them, and there's government institutes that also suggest this, and, and every month they put out new papers. But uh, it's on very shaky grounds, and so I... It is only sustained by a constant campaign of fear. Yes. That it can't be justified on scientific grounds. 
no. And that this is not sustainable, this, this fear, and it will collapse eventually, that, that is very clear. So uh, now there are second thoughts on some things. And uh, I th what we see in, in Germany, uh, that some media already backtrack and say, okay, uh, we, we will not support this alarmism any, anymore. And uh, yes, the tide is, is changing, I think. A number of uh, the major German newspapers and broadcasters that were originally very uh, avid uh, global warming advocates have uh, kind of backed off on that yeah. and have started taking a more realistic uh, view of things. That, that's absolutely true and uh, also on this conference it was said in 2007 that's a force assessment report by the IPCC. This was the height of the climate alarmism. And then uh, future um, his science historians probably will have to decide where the peak was. But in my opinion, that, that was uh, 2007. And since then, uh, things are relaxing a bit more. We, we are not yet there, definitely mm. not. It, it's still quite a way to go. But uh, we have uh, now newspapers that uh, two years ago, when we published a book on, on this issue, now two years later they sympathize with us and say, and yes, your book is uh, it's called The Neglected Sun. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an attempt in a popular science format to uh, put all these complex issues together in, in one narrative. Uh, and uh, the main, the bottom line is that the solar activity, the activity changes of the sun, this is probably the biggest driver of, of long-term climate and that a lot of the warming of the last hundred years is basically just a sun that has come out of a pause to, uh, to a very active state. And Dr. Fritz Verenholt, of the, uh, who was one of the pioneers yes. of the environmental movement, very big in that, uh, has uh, worked with you on that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and this is why we were heard, uh, and I'm very happy for this collaboration, which went extremely well, and we are still working together on that subject. But because he was a former uh, minister of, of uh, the environment in, in one of the states of, of Germany, he was hurt and, and suddenly people probably woke up, a lot of people came to us and said, yes, that's right, what you're writing, uh, just those who can lose their face, they, they were reluctant. And now step by step, I think we are we're winning them over and uh, there is a realism beginning to take place. Are you seeing there? more scientists coming forward, uh, like Dr. Bernholt and yourself, uh, speaking out on this? Yeah, uh, the most extreme scientists, of course, not. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't know how to win them over. It's probably impossible. But uh, those in the middle who were quiet, they, they publish more papers on this now. And they do send us emails with the press releases, uh, probably hoping that we will spread the news. So institutes are putting out inconvenient press releases where the power of the natural climate cycles is demonstrated. And, and maybe seven years ago, uh, that would not have been possible. No, that's good. Now, your book is in German. It's also been translated into English, correct? That's right. So the original title in German is Die Kalte Sonne, The Cold Sun. But uh, last year, we also published an English version. and. Uh, this is called the neglected sun, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, it has lots of figures. Um, and yet, it, it's it's a popular science book. On the other hand, we have uh, 50 pages of uh, references in there. So, mm -hmm. people who accused us this would be unscientific. I say, uh, we are just reviewing the literature as the IPCC have done. Mm -hmm.